Rationing was introduced temporarily by the British government several times during the 20th century, during and immediately after a war. At the start of the Second World War in 1939, the United Kingdom was importing 20 million long tons of food per year, including about 70% of its cheese and sugar, nearly 80% of fruits, and about 70% of cereals and fats. The UK also imported more than half of its meat, and relied on imported feed to support its domestic meat production. The civilian population of the country was about 50 million. It was one of the principal strategies of the Germans in the Battle of the Atlantic to attack shipping bound for Britain, restricting British industry and potentially starving the nation into submission. To deal with sometimes extreme shortages, the Ministry of Food instituted a system of rationing. To buy most rationed items, each person had to register at chosen shops, and was provided with a ration book containing coupons. The shopkeeper was provided with enough food for registered customers. Purchasers had to take ration books with them when shopping, so that the relevant coupon or coupons could be cancelled. <laughs> First World War In line with its business-as-usual policy during the First World War, the government was initially reluctant to try to control the food markets. It fought off attempts to introduce minimum prices in cereal production, though relenting in the area of control of essential imports sugar, meat, and grains. When it did introduce changes, they were limited. In 1916, it became illegal to consume more than two courses while lunching in a public eating place or more than three for dinner. Fines were introduced for members of the public found feeding the pigeons or stray animals. In January 1917, Germany started unrestricted submarine warfare to try to starve Britain into submission. To meet this threat, voluntary rationing was introduced in February 1917. Bread was subsidized from September that year, prompted by local authorities taking matters into their own hands. Compulsory rationing was introduced in stages between December 1917 and February 1918 as Britain's supply of wheat decreased to just six weeks' worth. To help the process, ration books were introduced in July 1918 for butter, margarine, lard, meat, and sugar. For the most part, rationing benefited the health of the country. During the war, average energy intake decreased by only 3%, but protein intake by 6%. The general strike The government made preparations to ration food in 1925, in advance of an expected general strike, and appointed food control officers for each region. In the event, the trades unions of the London docks organised blockades by crowds, but convoys of lorries under military escort took the heart out of the strike, so that the measures did not have to be implemented. <laughs> Second World War After the Second World War began in September 1939 the first commodity to be controlled was petrol. On 8 January 1940 bacon, butter and sugar were rationed. This was followed by successive ration schemes for meat, tea, jam, biscuits, breakfast cereals, cheese, eggs, lard, milk, and canned and dried fruit. In June 1942 the Combined Food Board was set up by the United Kingdom and the United States to coordinate the world supply of food to the Allies, with special attention to flows from the US and Canada to Britain. 
almost all foods apart from vegetables and bread were rationed by August 1942. Strict rationing inevitably created a black market. Almost all controlled items were rationed by weight but meat was rationed by price. Fresh vegetables and fruit were not rationed but supplies were limited. Some types of imported fruit all but disappeared. Lemons and bananas became unobtainable for most of the war, oranges continued to be sold but greengrocers customarily reserved them for children and pregnant women, who could prove their status by producing their distinctive ration books. Other domestically grown fruit such as apples still appeared from time to time, but again the sellers imposed their own restrictions so that customers were often not allowed to buy, for example, more than one apple each. Many people grew their own vegetables, greatly encouraged by the highly successful Dig for Victory motivational campaign. In 1942 numerous children between 5 and 7 years old had become used to wartime restrictions. When questioned about bananas, many did not believe such items existed. Game meat such as rabbit and pigeon was not rationed but was not always available. A popular music hall song, written 20 years previously but sung ironically, was Yes. We have no bananas. During the food rationing, British biologists ate laboratory rats. Most controversial was bread. It was not rationed until after the war ended, but the national loaf of wholemeal bread replaced the ordinary white variety, to the distaste of most housewives who found it mushy, grey and easy to blame for digestion problems. In May 1942, an order was passed that meals served in hotels and restaurants must not cost over five shillings per customer, must not be of more than three courses, and at most one course could contain meat, fish or poultry. This was partly in response to increasing public concerns that luxury off-ration foodstuffs were being unfairly obtained by those who could afford to dine regularly in restaurants. Fish was not rationed, but prices increased considerably as the war progressed. The government initially allowed this, since it realized that fishermen would need to be able to collect a premium for their catch if they were at risk of enemy attack while at sea, but prices were controlled from 1941. Like other non-rationed items, fish was rarely freely available, as supplies dropped to 30% of pre-war levels, and long queues built up at fishmongers and fish and chip shops. The quality of wartime chips was often felt to be below standard, because of the low quality fat available. As the war progressed rationing was extended to other commodities such as clothing. Clothing was rationed on a point system. When it was introduced, on 1 June 1941, no clothing coupons had been issued, and at first the unused margarine coupons in ration books were valid for clothing. Initially the allowance was for about one new outfit per year, as the war progressed the points were reduced, until buying a coat used almost a year's clothing coupons. On 1 July 1942 the basic civilian petrol ration was abolished, this had been announced on 13 March 1942. Ivor Novello was a British public figure sent to prison for four weeks for misusing petrol coupons, after that, vehicle fuel was only available to official users, such as the emergency services, bus companies and farmers. The priority users of fuel were always, of course, the armed forces. Fuel supplied to approved users was dyed, and use of this fuel for non-essential purposes was an offence. Certain foodstuffs that the 1940s British consumer would find unusual, for example whale meat and canned snowic fish from South Africa, were not rationed. 
Despite this they did not prove popular, in addition to rationing, the government equalized the food supply through subsidies on items consumed by the poor and the working class. In 1942-43, £145 million was spent on food subsidies, including £35 million on bread, flour and oatmeal, £23 million on meat and the same on potatoes, £11 million on milk, and £13 million on eggs. Topic. Public catering. Restaurants were initially exempt from rationing but this was resented, as people with more money could supplement their food rations by eating out frequently. The Ministry of Food in May 1942 issued new restrictions on restaurants. Meals were limited to three courses, only one component dish could contain fish or game or poultry, but not more than one of these. In general no meals could be served between 11 p.m. midnight in London and 5 a.m. without a special license. The maximum price of a meal was five shillings, with extra charges allowed for cabaret shows and luxury hotels. About 2,000 new wartime establishments called British restaurants were run by local authorities in schools and church halls. Here a plain three-course meal cost only 9d and no ration coupons were required. They evolved from the London County Council's Londoners Meals Service, which began as an emergency system for feeding people who had been blitzed out of their homes. They were open to all and mostly served office and industrial workers. Topic. Health effects In December 1939 Elsie Widowson and Robert McCants of the University of Cambridge tested whether the United Kingdom could survive with only domestic food production if U-boats ended all imports. Using 1938 food production data, they fed themselves and other volunteers one egg, one pound of meat and four ounces of fish a week, one quarter pint .14 liter of milk a day, four ounces of margarine, and unlimited amounts of potatoes, vegetables and wholemeal bread. Two weeks of intensive outdoor exercise simulated the strenuous wartime physical work Britons would likely have to perform. The scientists found that the subject's health and performance remained very good after three months. The only negative results were the increased time needed for meals to consume the necessary calories from bread and potatoes, and what they described as a remarkable Increase in flatulence from the large amount of starch in the diet. The scientists also noted that their feces had increased by 250% in volume. The results kept secret until after the war gave the government confidence that, if necessary, food could be distributed equally to all, including high value war workers, without causing widespread health problems. Britain's actual wartime diet was never as severe as in the Cambridge study because imports from the United States avoided the U-boats, but rationing improved the health of British people, infant mortality declined and life expectancy rose, excluding deaths caused by hostilities. This was because it ensured that everyone had access to a varied diet with enough vitamins. Topic. Standard rationing during the Second World War The standard rations during the Second World War were as follows. Quantities are per week unless otherwise stated. Topic. Food rations Topic. Army and Merchant Navy rations 
Once 2D bought about one pound three ounces, 540 grams of meat. Offal and sausages were only rationed from 1942 to 1944. When sausages were not rationed, the meat needed to make them was so scarce that they often contained a high proportion of bread. Eggs were rationed and allocated to ordinary consumers as available. In 1944 30 allocations of one egg each were made. Children and some invalids were allowed three a week, expectant mothers two on each allocation. One egg per week or one packet makes 12 ersatz eggs of egg powder per month vegetarians were allowed two eggs plus 24 points for four weeks for tinned and dried food. Arrangements were made for vegetarians so that other goods were substituted for their rations of meat. Milk was supplied at 3 imp pt 1.7 l each week with priority for expectant mothers and children under 5, 3.5 imp pt 2.0 l for those under 18, children unable to attend school 5 imp pt 2.8 L, certain invalids up to 14 imp pt 8.0 L. Each consumer received one tin of milk powder equivalent to 8 imperial pints or 4.5 liters every 8 weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Special civilian rations Persons falling within the following descriptions were allowed 8 ounces 230 grams of cheese a week in place of the general ration of 3 ounces 85 grams. Vegetarians meat and bacon coupons must be surrendered. Underground mine workers Agricultural workers holding unemployment insurance books or cards bearing stamps marked agriculture. County roadmen, forestry workers, including fellers and holiers, land drainage workers, including catchment board workers, members of the auxiliary force of the Women's Land Army, railway train crews, including crews of shunting engines but not including dining car staffs. Railway signalmen and permanent way men who have not access to canteen facilities. Certain types of agricultural industry workers, workers employed on threshing machines, tractor workers who are not included in the agricultural unemployment insurance stamp scheme, hay pressers and trussers. Topic. Weekly supplementary allowances of rationed foods for invalids Non-food rations Clothing In Britain during the Second World War, clothes rationing was announced on 1 June 1941. A major cause was the increased need for clothing materials to be utilized for producing uniforms. By this point in the war, one-fourth of the population was wearing uniforms. Many of the female population who needed uniforms were part of the women's auxiliary forces. There were also a lot of volunteer services and organizations. The materials to make tarpaulins and tires were heavily affected by this rationing. It also became difficult for civilians to get shoes and boots. Another major part of rationing was the implementation of a coupon system. There were 66 points for clothing per year, in 1942 it was cut to 48, in 1943 to 36, and in 1945 to 24. This system operated through a points system. Clothing was ranked and based on this ranking, civilians would be able to purchase clothing. 
Clothing rationing points could also be used for wool, cotton and household textiles. Before rationing lace and frills were popular on knickers but these were soon banned so that material could be saved. The number of points that each piece of clothing would be valued at was determined by not only how much labor went into making it, but also how much material was used. A dress could run some 111 coupons, whereas a pair of stockings only cost two. Similarly, men's shoes cost seven tickets, while women's cost only five. In 1945, an overcoat wool and fully lined was 18 coupons, a man's suit, 26 to 29 according to lining, children aged 14 to 16 got 20 more coupons. When purchasing clothing not only did civilians need to have coupons, but they also had to purchase things with money. No points were required for second-hand clothing or fur coats, but their prices were fixed. People had extra points for work clothes, such as overalls for factory work. If you were a manual worker, civilian uniform wearer, a diplomat or a performer, you would most likely receive more tickets. New mothers also received extra coupons. From March to May 1942 clothing austerity measures were introduced which restricted the number of buttons, pockets and pleats among other things on clothes. Clothes rationing ended on 15 March 1949. <laughs> Soap All types of soap were rationed. Coupons were allotted by weight or if liquid by quantity. In 1945, the ration gave four coupons each month, babies and some workers and invalids were allowed more. A coupon would yield four ounces 113 grams bar hard soap, three ounces 85 grams bar toilet soap, Half an ounce, 14 grams, no. One liquid soap. Six ounces, 170 grams, soft soap. Three ounces, 85 grams, soap flakes. Six ounces, 170 grams, powdered soap. Topic: Fuel. The fuel and lighting coal order 1941 came into force in January 1942. Central heating was prohibited in the summer months. Domestic coal was rationed to 15 long hundredweight 1,680 pounds, 762.0 kilograms for those in London and the south of England, 20 long hundredweight 2,240 pounds, 1,016 kilograms for the rest the southern part of England having generally a milder climate. Some kinds of coal such as anthracite were not rationed, and in the coal mining areas were eagerly gathered as they were in the Great Depression see the road to Wigan Pier. Topic. Paper Newspapers were limited from September 1939, at first to 60% of their pre-war consumption of newsprint. Paper supply came under the No. 48 Paper Control Order, 4 September 1942 and was controlled by the Ministry of Production. By 1945 newspapers were limited to 25% of their pre-war consumption. Wrapping paper for most goods was prohibited, the paper shortage often made it more difficult than usual for authors to get work published. In 1944, George Orwell wrote, in Mr. Stanley Onwin's recent pamphlet publishing in Peace and War, some interesting facts are given about the quantities of paper allotted by the government for various purposes. Here are the present figures. 
A particularly interesting detail is that out of the 100,000 tons allotted to the stationary office, the war office gets no less than 25,000 tons, or more than the whole of the book trade put together. At the same time paper for books is so short that even the most hackneyed classic is liable to be out of print, many schools are short of textbooks, new writers get no chance to start and even established writers have to expect a gap of a year or two years between finishing a book and seeing it published. Topic. Other products Whether rationed or not, many consumer goods became difficult to obtain because of the shortage of components. Examples included razor blades, baby bottles, alarm clocks, frying pans and pots. Balloons and sugar for cakes for birthday parties were partially or completely unavailable. Many fathers saved bits of wood to build toys for Christmas presents, and Christmas trees were almost impossible to obtain due to timber rationing. Topic: <laughs> Post Second World War. On the 8th of May 1945, the Second World War ended in Europe, but rationing continued. Some aspects of rationing became stricter for some years after the war. At the time this was presented as needed to feed people in European areas under British control, whose economies had been devastated by the fighting. This was partly true, but with many British men still mobilised in the armed forces, an austere economic climate, and a centrally planned economy under the post-war Labour government, resources were not available to expand food production and food imports. Frequent strikes by some workers, most critically dock workers made things worse. A common ration book fraud was the ration books of the dead being kept and used by the living. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Political reaction. In the late 1940s, the Conservative Party exploited and incited growing public anger at rationing, scarcity, controls, austerity and government bureaucracy. They used the dissatisfaction with the socialistic and egalitarian policies of the Labour Party to rally middle-class supporters and build a political comeback that won the 1951 general election. Their appeal was especially effective to housewives, who faced more difficult shopping conditions after the war than during it. Topic. Timeline The 27th of May 1945, bacon ration cut from 4 to 3 ounces per week. Cooking fat ration cut from 2 to 1 ounce per week. Soap ration cut by an eighth, except for babies and young children. The referenced newspaper article predicted that households would be grossly hampered in making food items that included pastry. The 1st of June 1945, the basic petrol ration for civilians was restored. The 19th of July 1945, in order to preserve the egalitarian nature of rationing, gift food parcels from overseas weighing more than 5 pounds kilograms would be deducted from the recipient's ration. Summer 1946, continual rain ruined Britain's wheat crop. Bread rationing started. January to March 1947, winter of 1946-1947 in the United Kingdom, long hard frost and deep snow. Frost destroyed a huge amount of stored potatoes. Potato rationing started. 
mid-1947, a transport and dock strike, which among other effects caused much loss of imported meat left to rot on the docks, until the army broke the strike. The basic petrol ration was stopped. 1 June 1948, the Motor Spirit Regulation Act 1948 was passed, ordering a red dye to be to put into some petrol, and that red petrol was only allowed to be used in commercial vehicles. A private car driver could lose his driving license for a year if red petrol was found in his car. A petrol station could be shut down if it sold red petrol to a private car driver. See List of Acts of the Parliament of the United Kingdom, 1940-1959-1948. June 1948, the basic petrol ration was restored, at a third of its previous size. 1948, bread came off ration. May 1949, clothes rationing ended. According to one author, this was because attempts to enforce it were defeated by continual massive illegality, black market, unofficial trade in loose clothing coupons, many forged, bulk thefts of unissued clothes ration books. The 23rd of February 1950, the 1950 general election is fought largely on the issue of rationing. The Conservative Party campaigned on a manifesto of ending rationing as quickly as possible. The Labour Party argued for the continuation of rationing indefinitely. Labour was returned, but with its majority badly slashed to five seats. The 26th of May 1950, petrol rationing ended. The 25th of October 1951-1951 United Kingdom general election. The Conservatives came back into power. February 1953, confectionery rationing ended. September 1953, sugar rationing ended. The 4th of July 1954, meat and all other food rationing ended in Britain, although rationing formally ended in 1954, cheese production remained depressed for decades afterwards. During rationing, most milk in Britain was used to make one kind of cheese, nicknamed government cheddar, not to be confused with the government cheese issued by the U.S. welfare system. This wiped out nearly all other cheese production in the country, and some indigenous varieties of cheese almost disappeared. Later government controls on milk prices through the Milk Marketing Board continued to discourage production of other varieties of cheese until well into the 1980s, and it was only in the mid-1990s following the effective abolition of the MMB that the revival of the British cheese industry began in earnest. Topic. Suez Crisis Petrol rationing was briefly reintroduced in late 1956 during the Suez Crisis but ended again on 14 May 1957. Advertising of petrol on the recently introduced ITV was banned for a period. Topic. 1970s oil crises Petrol coupons were issued for a short time as preparation for the possibility of petrol rationing during the 1973 oil crisis. The rationing never came about, in large part because increasing North Sea oil production allowed the UK to offset much of the lost imports. By the time of the 1979 energy crisis, the United Kingdom had become a net exporter of oil, so on that occasion the government did not even have to consider petrol rationing. Topic. See also 
British cuisine List of renewable resources produced and traded by the United Kingdom Ration stamp Utility clothing Utility furniture Woolton pie